Hello, and welcome to this segment of Loving Life. I'm Charlie Silva, board certified hypnotist and certified professional life coach. I've helped many people take back control of their life and achieve their goals by asking the following question. Loving life, are you loving yours? If so, wonderful. If not, why not? If there's something that's stopping you from loving your life, what is it? And let's find ways to overcome it. If you missed any previous segments of Loving Life, you can watch them online at the MTN18 website, mtn18.com. Now during this segment, I'll answer some of the viewer mail and telephone calls I've received. I really appreciate it when someone takes the time to send me a comment or a question because it reinforces my belief in the fact that most people desire to expand their knowledge of our universe and the wonderful gifts God has given each of us. Barbara from Blowing Rock called me to make the following comment and ask the following question. I really appreciate the work you're doing to help people. Do you ever hold your workshops in the Boone area? Well, thanks very much for your comment and question, Barbara. It was a pleasure speaking with you. As I explained during our conversation, I hold my workshops at my office building in Wilkesboro. I typically don't hold a workshop unless at least three people register for it. Now my reasoning for this is that I want the workshop to be energetic and interactive between myself and the attendees. Over time, I've found that workshops with fewer than three attendees don't typically have the same level of energy and interaction as those with a higher number of attendees. So to answer your question about holding workshops in the Boone area, if you or someone you know has a location that can hold at least three people comfortably and is interested in having me schedule a workshop with them, feel free to contact me and I'll be very happy to do so. Thanks again for the question, Barbara. Now, Benny from Wilkesboro wrote, if hypnosis is able to help people deal with so many challenges, including health issues usually caused by stress, why don't more doctors use it to help their patients? Thanks very much for the question, Benny. An interesting aspect of the history of hypnosis is that many years ago, many doctors did in fact use hypnosis to help their patients. Now I don't have time on this program to review the entire history of hypnosis, but you can check var various online websites to view the extensive history hypnosis has had with the medical profession. For example, and very briefly, you'll find that during the 1800s, physicians actually used hypnosis as a means to keep their patients from feeling pain as the doctors performed surgical procedures on them. During the early 1900s, many psychologists, including Sigmund Freud, used hypnosis when treating their patients. From the 1930s to the 1960s, Dave Ellman, considered to be one of the fathers of modern hypnosis techniques, taught hypnosis to hundreds of physicians all over the United States. During the 1950s, both the British and American medical associations accepted hypnosis as a useful therapeutic tool. However, what also happened during the 1950s was the explosion of research into more and more drugs that, on the surface, seemed to get the results enjoyed by hypnosis, but in a quicker time frame. Recently, however, more doctors and hospitals are realizing that the answer to curing illness isn't always found in a pill. Several respected physicians have written on the importance of dealing with illness in a more complete way, including with the use of hypnosis as a complementary process to the typical medical procedures. And several respected hospitals even have a department dedicated to the use of hypnosis. The list of hospitals includes the Stanford University Medical School, the University of Minnesota Children's Hospital, the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health, and the Harvard University Medical School. Now even the Mayo Clinic, after conducting extensive research into hypnosis, has concluded, and I quote, the acceptance of hypnosis as a mode of treatment in medicine is increasing as a result of careful, methodical, empirical work of many research pioneers. Many important trials reviewed here have helped to establish the role of hypnosis in contemporary medicine. These trials have established the utility and efficacy of hypnosis for several medical conditions, either alone or as a part of the treatment regimen. Nonetheless, skepticism may prevail and hypnosis may remain underused because of the tendency to doubt or fear the unknown. However, according to a recent study, healthcare providers changed their attitudes significantly and positively when presented with information about the use of hypnosis in medicine. Through greater awareness and acceptance of hypnosis, 
additional training and research can be inspired in pursuit of improved techniques and new areas of potential benefit." End quote. So you see, Benny, research regarding hypnosis conducted by well-respected individuals and institutions is once again making the use of hypnosis more accepted within the established medical community. Now, I've worked with many doctors who have referred patients to me because those doctors realize that hypnosis can be a wonderful complementary technique to help their patients deal with certain conditions. And a common condition referred to me by doctors is to help their patients manage chronic pain by using hypnosis as a complementary tool. Unfortunately, at the worst of it, most people who suffer from chronic pain find that they can think of little else other than their pain. It can be very challenging to focus on the important things or just the fun things in life in order to take their mind off of it. It's a travesty that so many people have to deal with chronic pain. And pharmaceutical help sometimes can have little or no effect on the sufferer. The bottom line is that no matter how good you are at just dealing with it, pain negatively affects your quality of life. Well, what if there was another way, a way to not just live with it, but to take control? to learn how to relieve and reduce your pain so that you could actually get on with your life without thinking about your pain constantly. Well, simply put, there is. And thanks to many scientific studies, more and more doctors are finally realizing it. Science has proven to us all the ways that our brains either prioritize or ignore sensations. Hypnosis helps you to do this. It will powerfully shift the perception of what pain actually is by changing the brain's perspective on what priority level the discomfort should get. You can actually, through hypnosis and through learning some simple self-hypnosis, learn to turn down the volume of your pain. Hypnosis can help you change on a core level how you experience pain, what it feels like to you, and actually how painful the pain is. You enable yourself to get the control to turn your pain down. Now, during the initial hypnosis session, I teach my clients some simple self-hypnosis techniques. Learning self-hypnosis gives you even more power to take control so that you can tailor your experience to your exact personal circumstances, to target the exact type of pain you experience. Now, if you have a condition currently being treated by a physician and you believe hypnosis can help in dealing with it, talk with your doctor. As I noted, I've worked with many doctors who have referred patients to me because those doctors realize that hypnosis can be a wonderful complementary technique to help their patients deal with certain conditions. And I'm always more than happy to talk with doctors and discuss how hypnosis may be able to help them help their patients. Thanks again for your question, Benny. And I'll continue answering viewer questions during our next segment of Loving Life. Be sure to check my website for upcoming Take Back Control of Your Life workshops. The workshops are free of charge. If you have goals you'd like to achieve, but have been unable to do so, attending one of my workshops may be all you need to take back control of your life. Well, I'm sure I've given you some things, positive things, to think about. Send any questions or comments you have to me at charlie at mtn18.com, and I'll answer them in future segments of Loving Life. I'm Charlie Silva, and I'm asking you, loving life, are you loving yours? If so, wonderful. If not, why not? If there's something that is stopping you from loving your life, what is it? And let's find ways to overcome it. Always remember that you are awesome. Have a wonderful day filled with love and gratitude.